everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Yay. It is our day one of the Art of Effortless Feminine Manifestation Facebook Live Manifestation Party. I am uh, really glad today is here and I'm going to get started in just a moment, but I just want to make sure I give everybody a time to Everybody, a little bit of time to uh, connect in. Sometimes there's a little bit of a glitch in the beginning of these Facebook Lives. So I'm um, just going to give it a second and see what happens. If you are here, please let me know and uh, give me a heart. Hey, Sarah. Woohoo. Happy to have you here. Um, just give me, give me some hearts, some smiles, some whatever, and I'm just going to take a minute or two to let people get, get in here and get on, and then we're going to get started. So, awesome. Sydney just joined. Hi, Sydney. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. <sighs> this day has been kind of a long time coming. I've been really envisioning to uh, create, hi, hi Keila, nice, Stephanie, welcome, so happy to have you here, fabulous, okay, cool. I actually haven't done a Facebook Live in quite a bit, so I'm praying <laughs> that we can use the art of uh, feminine manifestation today to make sure that everything runs smoothly, and uh, we're going to juice it up, so, all right, looks like a bunch of you are here, I'm just going to dive in, so. Once again, welcome. Thanks for the thumbs up, Sarah. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. I am Sierra Sullivan. For those of you who have never met you, yay, Crystal, welcome. Okay, so everybody's going to just be hopping on here. Yay, I know. It takes a second to get going. So, all right. Let's just actually take a deep breath together before I dive in because I'm so excited that the energy is going to be through the roof. So let's, we're going to ground a little bit and then we're going to raise it up. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so I invite you to just drop your feet, drop your hands, drop whatever's in front of you for a moment. We're going to get in a space to really receive this powerful, powerful, sacred information. <sighs> so I invite you to close your eyes and we're just going to breathe together for a moment. So as you're closing your eyes, go ahead and just get connected to your breath. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to change it. You don't have to deepen it. I just want you to begin to become present to your breath. <sighs> just by becoming present to your breath, you're probably going to notice that your breath may be shifting just ever so slightly. It's so powerful when we actually bring awareness to something, especially our breath which is, of course, our life force. So just breathe naturally, normally, as you are breathing. I want you to just keep bringing more and more of your focus and your awareness to your breath. And see if you notice anything different with your awareness. In a moment, we're going to breathe together, but I want you, each and every one of you beautiful ladies here, to find your own rhythm, because that's what it's going to take to not only be available to receive this information, but it's also going to be what's going to be played with throughout these four days and the concepts that I'm going to teach to you. So find your true center. Find your rhythmic, your unique rhythm of your breath. And if you're still enough, if you're still enough, you may even feel your heartbeat, which is another beautiful rhythm, unique to you. So relaxing, breathing, and I want you to bring attention to your root chakra, which is the base of your spine, your tailbone. And just notice where your tailbone and your seat and your root chakra meets whatever it is that you're sitting on and just bring your awareness to that point. So you're breathing, you're relaxing, and you're bringing your awareness now to the point where your bottom meets your seat. Hmm. Just feel the support. You're not doing anything other than just sitting. And yet you are so supported. You are supported by the very seat, couch, chair, whatever it is, floor underneath you, 
and that is supported by the floor underneath that, and that is supported by the building, and that is supported by the earth, and the earth is supported by the universe, and so on and so forth. So without even having to change a thing right now, simply by bringing your awareness to that meet point, that meeting point of your butt and your seat, you are fully supported physically. And the fact that you've shown up here, you are supported in the sisterhood to receive this data, this information, this magical conjuring formula. You showed up here for a reason. So you're breathing, you're relaxing, you're connected to your seat, you're finding the simplicity and the support that's available to you. I want you to put your hands on your heart and find the gratitude in yourself for showing up today, for being here, for taking time out of the million and one things that you could be doing other than this. And really love yourself, thank yourself for being here in this moment. Still breathing, relaxing, enjoying, connecting to the pleasure, the support, the present moment. All right, in just another second, we're gonna take three deep breaths together to just move some energy before we dive into today's material. I know I can always use these three breaths. So I invite you on your next exhale, wherever you are, Take a deep breath in and release. Two more. Deep breath in and release. One more. Make it count. Deep breath in. Hold it. See if you can expand and hold and hold and hold. You might feel your heartbeat. You might feel a little pressure, a little expansion. And and just a moment before you open your eyes, I just want you to notice once again, become aware of any energetic shift that may be present for you. Beautiful. All right. I invite you to open your eyes and join the party now that you are aligned, grounded, supported, and more oxygenated. <laughs> All right, so welcome sisters. I am so happy you're here. For those of you that just joined, I want to say hi. I'm so happy to see you here. My name is Sierra Sullivan, and my biggest passion and excitement in life is sharing tools and information and uplifting education and stories from my life and lives of my friends and family and clients to liberate you from the places in your life where you may feel stagnant or stuck or disempowered or doubtful or uncertain or any other place that makes you feel just ugh because this world has taught you or trained you or conditioned you as it has with all of us to dim your light and dim your power in order to exist. And I know you're all here because you're like, I am so done with that and I am ready to live a whole different paradigm and I'm ready to infuse the world with my magic and my power and to actually step forward and be able to conjure and create whatever it is that your heart desires with ease and grace and pleasure and fun and play. Yeah, that's right. Thumbs up and hearts all the way, ladies. So that's what this series is designed for. I um, will weave my story in and out, for those of you that don't know me. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time blah, blah, blah about who I am. It's, it's important, but not. It's here, you're here for you. I'm just a, a conduit in which to reflect the beauty and the knowledge that already exists in your own heart. Probably much of what I'll be sharing with you is stuff that you have read in books or practiced or had experience with yourself or possibly even maybe you teach this. Um, and this is just an opportunity to get another bit of information so that you can actually believe more in what you know to already be true, but maybe haven't practiced it as much in your life. 
So I am here to share the bounty of knowledge and expertise and experience that I've personally had in my life and I've per personally witnessed in the lives of so many people that I have supported over these 15 plus years I've been in the empowerment business for women and to invite you into this new paradigm conversation and to remind you that you have the power to create whatever it is that you desire without all that efforting. And we're going to talk a lot about that. So again, my stories will be woven in, you'll get to know me over these next four days. And uh, this, the way that this uh, Art of Effortless Feminine Manifestation series is going to work, just to give you a little overview, is that um, for the next four days, at this very time, in this very group, in this very live feed, uh, we are going to gather and I'm going to give you a piece of each of the four-part formula that you're going to be receiving the information on. And I've broken it out over four days because you know, ladies, you're so freaking brilliant and, and you have risen to such great lengths in your life and have accomplished so much that you don't need a lot more information just tossed at you all at once, right? Concept, schmoncept. The days of information overload are over. It's really about experiential. I want you to know by the end of this week, in your bones, in your cells, that what I'm sharing with you is actually effective is actually something that works for you. It's actually something that you can navigate and play with and not just take a bunch of notes and be like, yeah, that sounds really great. I'm going to get really excited about it. And then the notebook goes away and life goes on. And you're like, what was that that she said? And two days later when, you know, the dog, you know, wets the bed or whatever ends up happening or the kid pukes all over the car or who knows what's going to happen. The computer blows up. You don't get lost and forget about this and then have to spend another four days, four hours, you know, three days, whatever it is, reading books, attending seminars to get it back. Because again, what I'm about to share with you is something that I know in your deepest heart of hearts, you already know and you already have had a mastery of, whether it be this lifetime when you were a child or at some point in your life when maybe you were more uplifted and more saucy or sexy or whatever. And for whatever reason, just life got in the way and you forgot your power and you forgot that these concepts actually work. And I'm here to remind you and give you an experience of having them work once again or potentially newly in your life so that you can have the knowledge always, not forget it, not have it be some concept up in your beautiful brains, but actually embodied in your knowing, body, mind, and soul. So, all I wanna say is that's why I decided to create a four part series and break the four parts of the, the steps rather of the art of effortless feminine manifestation formula into the four different pieces so that each day you'll be able to receive a concept, experiment with it in your life, report back in in this beautiful container, safe container of women who have Many women in this group have studied with me on multiple different capacities and have a somewhat mastery so you're in a community full of sisters that can support you and women who are interested and curious and want to support each other anyways. So that's what's going to happen in these next four days. These calls will run, I would bet, probably about 45 minutes to 75 minutes. Um, of that, the teaching portion will probably be about 45 minutes, and then I'm going to stick around for another you know, 20 to 30 minutes afterwards for any questions, any clarifications you need, um, anything at all, and then there's going to be some home play for each day, as I mentioned, to take a couple of the concepts that I've given you and to really work with them over the next 24 hours until we meet again the following day, okay? So, looks like there's a couple of technical things happening there, so I'm glad to see that uh, my girl Frankie's here to support that and know that if you're missing any of this content, these videos will be live in this, or not live, they will be, the, recorded, the recordings of these videos will actually be here for the rest of the week and probably for the weeks after. I'm not going to get rid of them, so you can come back into this group and you can revisit them. Um, and play with them. However, that being said, you're going to want to be as active as possible during these four days because that's when we're, the group power of this sisterhood is going to be focused in on the desires, on these concepts, and it's going to be a supercharged moment. 
Plus, we're just on the tail end of the new moon, which is the perfect time for conjuring what it is that you want to create. So we're in this very specific window in which to utilize this information and we can access the power of the planet, the sisterhood, your inner guidance, my guidance, in which to actually have great success with the information I'm about to share with you and the experience you're stepping into. Okay. I think that's enough of that information. If you have any questions about that, you can just write them down and save them to the end and I'll be happy to answer it. Okay, so I could not print out my notes, so I'm going to be over here a few things because my printer was not working. All right, let's see. Okay, I mentioned, do, 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 do. I think I've covered all this. One thing I do wanna say is that some of this information Maybe all of it, depending on where you're at, as much as I just shared that it may be familiar and a great reminder, for some of you, depending on where you are in your life and what you've been conditioned to believe or the experiences you've had, some of this information may rub against the very core uh, principles of how you have been taught that the world is meant to work. And that's okay, that's a good thing. I mean, I'm, I love to be an instigator and I love to stir the pots and I really want to shake loose any conditioning that is in the way of you having the greatest, most ease-filled, fun-filled, pleasureful, divine feminine expression life that you could possibly ever want. And we value and honor the divine masculine in this community very much. What we've been um, a little stuck in in this world at large has been a uh, distorted masculine set of principles and values that have actually not served us. So just know that there may be some things that you're gonna be like, I don't, yeah, right, what is she talking about? I don't, eh, whatever. Just, just be with that and allow yourself to play in the realm. This is your opportunity to be like, let me test it out for myself. You don't have to believe it. I'm not asking you to believe anything I tell you. What I'm inviting in is the opportunity for you to play in the field of what I'm offering you so that you can actually see for yourself. And the last thing I'll say about that is four days, I wish, oh my gosh, one of my big desires is that I could wave my magic wand and in four days, you would be absolutely fully available to this information and have it for life, which is possible. But this is not my first rodeo. I have been supporting women for over 15 years. <laughs> and I really get the depth of the conditioning that we are here to overcome in this lifetime. And you may find that one or two of the concepts work or a few things work, but that you haven't quite mastered it fully by the end of these four days. That's okay, this is a process. Even as I've been teaching this, I've evolved greatly and I've learned a ton and I've even you know, mastered this more and more and more over several years. The basic concepts of what I'm about to give you are instant manifestation possibilities. But the back story that each one of you may be carrying and the depth of the roots of that story may still impede your ability to have this information work at the fullest expression it possibly can. So just give yourself a little slack. Know that little baby things in this community are celebrated, the tiniest, tiniest things, and I'm gonna teach you about that over these next four days, how to actually utilize um, your, your newfound information to be available to see and celebrate the tiniest little, little ounces of manifestation and the big things that may happen for some of you that this course just may whoosh and you manifest a house out of the blue or something like that, which is something that I've done recently. So anyways, I just want to lay that foundation as well and know that if you're super juiced up and excited, there will be an invitation. Not today. I just want to get you into this concept, but over the next couple days, for those of you that do want to go deeper with me, there'll be an opportunity to um, look at that and play in a deeper field. But for now, my gift to you, my deepest pleasure is to give you these four days of my time, these four steps in the effortless feminine manifestation process and to have them begin to juice you up and have you see from here to here about how life can be much more fabulous and fun for all of you. Okay, without further ado, let's dive into the goods. Um, 
Keep those thumbs and those hearts coming too because I love interaction. I'm really much more of a live in-person girl. So, um, you know, it, it's great for me to know that you're there and give me the hearts and give me the thumbs up and then I feel juiced up because I'm on my phone and I, I can't really see everything that's going on. So whatever love you can throw my way, super useful. Awesome. Thanks for the heart. Okay. So first and foremost, I who's ready to rock their desires? What is a desire? I'm going to get into that in a minute, but I would love to hear from you. I can see the feed. I asked you, bring your desires. So if you have a desire and you've brought it to today's conversation and manifestation party, awesome. I would love for you to just type it in. I'd love to see some of those desires cross my screen. And if you don't have a desire already figured out, no concerns at all. We're going to get you super crystal clear. All right, me, share a desire, Kayla. Love, love, love to hear. And just, again, anybody just type them in and I'll read them off as I see them come across my screen. Um, because I know, whether you know you have desires or not, that all of you have them. All of you have them. There is something right now that you are yearning for. All right, somebody says, see my new speaking business take off. Woohoo! All right, Stephanie, that is a great desire. See that speaking business take off. Yep, and we're gonna, we can play with that today for sure. Who else has got a desire? I know you've got them, ladies. Maybe you're looking for that perfect partner. And even though you've been so close to manifesting your perfect partner, it's been just short of the mark. So maybe that's the desire you have today. Maybe you're desiring to um, have a vacation. All right, we got a rebirth of life purpose. All right, Valeria, nice. Rebirth of life purpose, that's a beautiful desire. It's time for something new. You know you're meant for more and you're like, something's been good, but it's ready for more. I wanna rebirth it and step out into the field. Awesome, yay. All right, let's see. All right, yay, Jules is here. Great job in sustainability where I make, good, make a good living, able to have life work balance, have a voice in the green industry and help the planet. Now that is a beautiful desire. That job or opportunity, because you know we know each other personally, so I wouldn't even say you're not getting a job, girl. You're getting opportunity to enhance everybody's knowledge and to really save the planet and help the planet. So yay, beautiful desire. Okay, what else we got? A hone in on my true gift in the world, all right. Aeen Grace, nice, beautiful, all right. You desire to just get clear on your truest gift. Well, I just wanna say, girl, you just being born and present in this world is your true gift. Let's just start there as a base and know that from there you're gonna be uh, more, more to come, more to be revealed. All right, to love and truly be loved. Get everything good that I deserve. Yes, yes, I double down on that, I triple down on that for all of us. We are love, we are truly loved, and we all deserve everything that we we desire and we're going to play with that over these next four days for sure all right so you can keep them coming ladies I'll read them if, if I see fit we're gonna move on to um, the goods huh. all right let me look at my notes here okay so let's get into the magical formula what is this formula what is this formula that she keeps speaking about well I'm gonna give you the overview of the four steps and then know that today we're gonna to cover the first step tomorrow we're gonna to cover the second step Thursday, we're gonna cover the third step, and Friday, we're gonna cover the fourth step in great detail. And so, the four parts of effortless feminine manifestation, so you might wanna get a notebook and a pen and write these down just so you kinda of have them and you know what's coming. First step, you are going to want to fully linger in the desire. Okay, so step one is linger in your desire. All right, Crystal's desire just came through, launching my business in Dallas and Chicago by July and making my financial goals, manifest business partners to work the business with me and be able to put more focus on my creative, looks like endeavors. Can't get cut off there, but awesome. Crystal, we're gonna talk about the difference between goals and desires today. So it looks like you've got a few of both in there. So beautiful, I love that you brought that forward. Okay, so step one and what today's, today's conversation and party is all about is linger in your desire. So that's today, that's step one. Tomorrow, Tuesday, we're gonna be covering step two, a really juicy step, one that's definitely gonna press some edges on all of you because it's going to blow your mind that this could actually be an action step in the world of manifestation. And that number two step is lean back. 
And I mean way back. Okay? So number two, step two, is lean back. Stay tuned for that one tomorrow. That one's a good one. Step three is, hello, God, are you speaking to me? <laughs> Spirit, anybody? Is anybody out there? Is anybody hearing my wishes and my dreams? Step three, listen for the guidance. Listen for the guidance. That's on Thursday. <laughs> and step four, this is the fun part, once you have the first three steps, and this is usually the step that many of us actually uh, put, um, <laughs> put in the front and is part of the problem and why we don't really quite manifest as fast as we'd like or sometimes don't manifest at all the things that we most desire. And that fourth step is leap into action. Leap into action. As I'm leap, <laughs> leap into action. So um, that's the fourth step and that's gonna be covered in depth on Friday, day four. All right, so linger in your desires today. Lean back is tomorrow. Listen for the guidance is on Thursday and leap into action is on Friday. Cool. All right, I call these the four L's of effortless feminine manifestation. All right, so let's dial in to desire because today we're gonna do some lingering. <laughs> All right, well, what the heck does that mean? Well, in short, it actually means that when you have a desire and you linger in it, <laughs> it means that you, get, you stay in the juiciness of that desire. You stay in the excitement. You stay in the joy of even having that desire. It's very Abraham Hicks. If you follow Abraham Hicks, they talk about the well of uh, the stream of well-being and that it's about how we feel that determines what we get, right? It's basic law of attraction stuff. Law of attraction is that which is like unto itself is drawn. Therefore, and, and these laws of the universe are no joke. They are just as real and powerful as the laws of physics and the laws of gravity and things like that. They are working whether you understand them or not, whether you know that you're working with them, whether you even know they exist. But the law of attraction is one of the most well-known laws of the universe. I'm sure most of you have a, some dabbling or understanding of that. And it really is about what you put out is what you get back. What you're thinking about is what you're receiving. How you're vibrating is what you're getting. Okay? So the concept of lingering in your desire means that, actually, before I even say that, I'm going to give you one more understanding. If any of you have read a book called The Desire Map by Danielle Laporte, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And if you haven't read it, no big deal. It's a great book. Um, what I'm about to teach you is based loosely on that concept. Most of us desire something not because of the thing that we think we want, the object, the person, the place, the, the adventure, but rather it's what we, how we want to feel when we receive that desire. It's really about feeling a certain way. Right? The money will help us feel, more money will help us feel more free, more accomplished. Uh, the, the relationship will help us feel loved and adored. The, the new job or the opportunity will help us feel smart and accomplished. Um, con con you know, feel like we've contributed something to the world. Uh, you know, all these types of things is really about how we're going to feel. Because the not having it, more often than not, feels really crappy to us which is the importance of the lingering piece. What often happens is a desire, and I'm gonna give a very clear example in a little bit about the, what a desire is and the difference between a desire and a goal. So just hang in there, you know, I'm gonna get there. Thank you, Gabriella, I'm brilliant, yeah. Often what happens is we launch a desire, a desire just bubbles up like, oh, we, oh and I just wanna say this, sometimes the desire comes from jealousy, right? Jealousy is a great way to, it's, like a, it's like a magnifying glass to our desires because if we see something that somebody else has and we find any sort of jealousy or envious feelings inside, then guarantee there's a desire under there that's not being met or not being expressed and that it 
perverts into jealousy and has you get crunky and junky and funky about it rather than excited about the possibility that you now have a desire. So I just want to throw that little thing. And that's a good one to write down and remember because in this world, we can get a little bit caught in certain energies that don't serve, especially when it comes to girlfriend relationships, sisters, friends, communities like this, where jealousy is like, ah! and you might start to notice you're going to have a little bit of jealousy as we play for the next four days and women start sharing their desires or sharing their manifestations and you get, you get that envious, jealous feeling. Pay attention to that because that is going to point directly to a desire that you have that you may have not been willing to look at, be with, accept, or embrace. Okay? So just again, a little side note there. Um, but desires are, let me see, I think I lost my, I lost my little path here, getting sidetracked on the jealousy. Um, oh, we often, we often get pissed off, upset, impatient, or mad when we don't have what we want. I just actually came out of a 10 day Vipassana, silent Vipassana meditation retreat a few weeks ago. And um, it was really fascinating because the concept of that meditation talks about the, the root of misery is the craving, the craving, craving, and the aversion, the aversion, the aversion <laughs> to life. Like we either are getting something we don't want and we're unhappy about it, we have an aversion to it, or we're wanting something that we don't have and we're upset about that. And so we vacillate back and forth in misery between having what we don't want and not wanting it and wanting what we don't have and wanting it. And we're never really in the present moment of the feeling experience of the juiciness of the linger of the desire, knowing that full well, it's, it's on its way because a lot of us don't believe that because we think that things are outside of ourselves. We get caught up in the how. And I know I'm talking fast, but... Trust me, ladies, over these next four days, you're going to, all of the things that I'm throwing at you right now will be filled in. So just, just know that. And again, these videos are available so you can watch them back again and again and again. Um, so I just want to, you know, remind you of that. And let's just take a moment and just bring it in. Feel it, feel it, whatever you got in this moment, let's just bring it in. Okay. Okay. So... The main issue is we often get really pissed off that we don't have what we want. And sometimes partnered with that is we don't even give ourselves permission to desire. And then we're pissed off because we don't even know what we want because we're not even taking the time to actually feel into what we want. Or we do know what we want, but we don't think it's even possible. So those are all sorts of ways that it's so easy to get cranky and pissed off about not having the thing that we want and then infusing all of that energy into the desire and then feeling totally disempowered about it because like attracts like. So now we're in this super funky space looking to manifest something that feels really good or the desire to feel really good and there's no way that they can come together and meet each other because the energies are like this. Uh, uh, uh. We're going to resolve that for you. And step one, linger in the desire, is really a first step in that. As I said, linger in your desire means that if you have something that you're desiring, you have something that you're wanting, although I, I'm going to, you know, we're going to talk about the word want in a minute because it's kind of a, it's kind of an edgy word, but I'm just going to use it for now because it's probably where most of you maybe are languaging in your own life. So if you have something that you want, you want to stay in the juiciness, you want to stay in the excitement, and you want to stay in the joy of having that desire, and more importantly, which will be your practice today that we'll get to, you want to actually put yourself in a feeling state that matches the same exact feeling that you're seeking from that very desire. So, we're going to get there. And hopefully this has been really, hopefully, a little peeling a little layers off of things. All right. Thanks for the thumbs up. I love it. Okay, so before we even go deeper in the actual how of the lingering can occur and the practice that I'm going to offer you uh, for the next 24 hours until tomorrow when we go into the lean back, is let's talk about desire in general, right? Desire has gotten a little bit of a bad rap in our culture. Uh, we have been built on very puritanical roots, uh, right? The Puritans came over and the religious movement rose and we've been told by multiple institutions, whether it be educational institutions, religious institutions, I mean, you name it, 
um, that desire is a bad thing. Even some somebody actually even posted uh, earlier, I was sharing, what are your desires? And somebody said, desire is the, is the root of all suffering. Well, not really. Desire is actually the root of all creation. It's the craving, gotta have it, gotta have it, gotta have it, gotta have it, or the, oh, I don't wanna have it, why don't I have it, why don't I have it, meh, that causes the suffering. <laughs> Desire is just desire. Desire is no different than a tree and a seed, a seed of a tree having the desire to grow and be the tree. It's already a built-in mechanism to human life. There's nothing bad or wrong or anything about it. It's the, 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 the pervertedness because it's been squelched that becomes the place where it comes out a little funky and then we judge that because it's been squished. So I mean, if you, if you have a seed and you put it in, in a soil that it can w grow in, but you know, it's like you put something on top of it, that seed's gonna come out a little bit, you know, that tree's gonna bend and twist and become a little bit gnarled. And that's what happens. So then it's gnarled and you look at the tree and you're like, well, that's an ugly tree or why did that tree, well, let's cut that tree down, that's not worth anything. It's kind of like what, what's happening with us, right? We get a little squished and then we're trying to still grow because more life is essential. We are either growing or we are dying. There is no hanging out, right? You don't see a plant just hanging out. It's either moving towards life, more life, growing, blossoming, flowering, expanding, or it's withering. There is no in between. So desire feeds more life. When we are infused with our desires, we are growing. When we are squelched and suppressed and depressed around it, we are dying. Just take that one in for a moment, ladies. Desire derives from the Latin desiderare, I think I pronounced that right, to long or wish for. Uh, Keila is asking, do you think all creation was sparked by a desire? I do, I do. Where that desire came from or who or what, or who or what is so, you know, such a small version of the possibility of the greater consciousness. Um, however, yes, I, I believe that. I really do believe that. Um, it's the seed, I'm about to speak about it. So it's from the Latin term to long or wish for, which itself derives from desidere, from the stars, suggesting that the original sense of the Latin is to await what the stars bring. I love that, right? I mean, we hear a lot in the conscious community, um, the conversation of, well, the universe is, you know, the universe brought me this, the universe brought me that, and, and all this beautiful stuff. And it's like, okay, yes, exactly. I also have a little bit of a news flash for you, though. You, dear sister, dear sisters, you're the universe. You can command the stars. Desire to await what the stars will bring is really about conjuring the already existing desires within you that are already mapped out in the stars that can actually come back down to earth through your expression and your energetic to create that which you most want. So I love that term. Desire, I'm just gonna read a little quote that I pulled from the Psychology Today article that I love. Thanks for the hearts. Desires constantly arise in us only to be replaced by other desires. So. They, if you were a Vipassana person, they are rising and passing, they are rising. We are constantly filled with desires, desires. There's no shortage of desires. They'll just pop up. Oh, I have a desire to have a piece of watermelon in the moment. Oh, I have a desire for that, for that new opportunity. Oh, I have a desire for a bigger opportunity. They're constant. They're, there's just no shortage of them because they feed life. Without this continuous stream of desires, there would be no longer any reason to do anything. We would just sit around. We'd be in the dying mode. We wouldn't be growing. We'd be dying. We'd be sitting around not doing anything going, oh, well, well, it's pretty boring around here. Let's get on with this death thing. <laughs> Life would grind to a halt as it does for people who lose the ability to desire. So desire is life force in and of itself. An acute crisis of desire corresponds to boredom and a chronic crisis to depression. Now, I have a lot of statistics about women and depression and what's happening on, around the globe and what's really going on here and why we are feeling less than at many times and feeling completely and utterly depressed, whether we experience full-on depression or not, because we've 
most often lost touch with the power of our desire and our, the power of, of our ability to actually create and conjure outside of what we've been taught. It's crazy. It's crazy. And that's why this four days is so important. It's going to really transform. It's going to give you a whole opportunity to shift from here to here and align yourself. This is not an alignment because you can see here and you can see here, but this, that's alignment. They are one. That's what I want for you ladies. We're going to jump outside the matrix. We're going to learn this formula and we're going to play with this formula and you're going to see very clearly that whatever is going on out there has nothing to do with what you can create in here. And I know you already know this, but you might already just know this. You're going to know this. So it is desire that moves us and in moving us, it gives us direction, life direction and meaning. So for those of you who are seeking a new purpose or an understanding of your true gifts, firing up those desires, lingering your desires is going to provide a lot of great juice and energetics and beautiful power for that to happen. So moving us gives our direction, our life direction and meaning, perhaps not meaning in a cosmic sense, but meaning in a more restrictive narrative sense. So for those of you that aren't so cosmic and out to, you know, create your life from the stars in the universe, <laughs> it still gives purpose. It still gives you purpose and direction and has you get clear on where, where, where to move your energy and your focus toward and where to look for what you're seeking to be responded and returned to you. Okay. Let's briefly talk about the difference between desire and a goal because in this world it can be very confusing because we live in a very goal oriented, make a plan, grab the bull by the horns, oh you have, a, you have an idea, go get it, go you know, after it, drive and do and succeed and climb that ladder and make it happen at all costs and, and you will be on top of the world. And you'll be exhausted and pissed off and cranky as hell and wondering, is this worth it? That's certainly been my story. And I'll probably weave that in more at another time. Um, but it's also been the story of, oh gosh, dozens and dozens and dozens of women that I work with side by side, that I'm friends with, that, I, that I've mentored with. I've seen this as an epidemic of women, burnout, sick, tired, exhausted, filled with doubt because they've gone about creating their life from the make, do, plan, goal, create. Now, I'm not saying goals are a bad thing at all because goals are the tiny incremental steps that we can map out in order to be focused <laughs> on task in which to get to a certain place. But they are not to be confused with desires themselves. Not to be confused with the desires themselves. A desire is more about a dream or a fantasy. And that's why they tend to get a bad rap because sometimes they feel very out in the stars, out in the moon. Because <laughs> they are, right? That's what the very meaning of the word desire, in the stars. Right? So they can feel so far-fetched and oftentimes so beyond the concept of our own reality that, we, that we're like, no way! How could that ever possibly happen? Um, quick example of this for my for myself is I had a desire that I don't know where the hell it came from other than just a desire to, well, I had two desires. I had a desire to make a difference in the world and that I was clear on. This was many years ago, I'm like 20, you know, back, in the, back in the early 2000s. <laughs> no, I'm not that old. Um, no, I really, 2000s. And I remember feeling, I knew that the, the job that I had or the career path that I was on was beautiful and financially lucrative, but it certainly was not fulfilling me. And I knew that there was something more I was meant for, like many of you have already stated in your desires earlier. And I, I ended up feeling like, okay, well, I, I have this desire. I'm supposed to make a difference in the world, but I had no idea what that was. And that was big enough. Like, oh, what does that look like? What is this supposed to mean? So I kind of just, you know, moved along with my life. And then out of the blue, another desire hit me. A desire to actually help women with body image challenges and help women connect more with themselves and each other in which to combat the neuroses of our feeling like we're ugly or not good enough because we don't look a certain way because society has placed impossible standards upon us that aren't even real. And all of a sudden a desire was born to create a magazine that would combat at the time all of the magazines that 
impact the way we feel about ourselves. So, you know, it's about, I didn't ever think that I would want to create a magazine for women. That was not even in my field. I couldn't even figure that out on my own. But one day the desire popped up out of the need for that to be something that I hoped to have in my own life. And then from there, I started to nurture the desire and linger in the desire because I didn't know how to create a magazine. I was not in the, I mean, I was in entertainment, but I was not a publisher. I never knew anything about magazines. I maybe had a writing background in college. It was like so far out of the possibility that I could even think about creating a magazine that I, I, for the first couple of years, I was like, who me now? (laughs) You know, but I, but the desire was there and it didn't go away. It didn't go away. It was birthed out of something beyond myself, a a compelling desire to help the world in some way. And then when I was shown how that help was meant to look, I denied it because it felt too big. It felt pie in the sky. I don't know anything about starting a magazine. How am I going to start a magazine? I So I just want you to reflect if maybe there's something like that happening in your life right now. And go ahead and type it in if it is, if this has sparked anything, and just put it out there for everybody to see so we can infuse it with love and know that there's probably, for most of you, something that feels bigger than, bigger than oh, I'm going to get the next job opportunity. It's probably, oh, shit, I'm actually being called to reach out to the UN. Or, I, like, I, I, had a, I had a desire to reach out to Hillary Clinton uh, last year. That felt so big, I didn't even know where to begin, even though I do have actually personal connections to her. But it was like, what? Now, that desire may still resurface again. But I'm talking about desire in the realm of fantasy and dream, where it's just like, it might be this thing, and you've been denying it because it feels so far out there that you didn't even realize that you're having these desires. Okay? Desire also comes automatically. We typically don't think and then decide about our desires. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we're like, hmm, what what do I desire for lunch today? Well, what am I feeling? Okay, so that's a little bit more cerebral. But mostly it's like, I have a craving for watermelon. Why can I get some watermelon? Or I'm going to start a magazine for women. What? I am? No, I'm not. Wait, who said that? (laughs) Right? A desire to sometimes burst through and you don't even know where it came from. Okay? You're starting to get the difference, right? It's like, there's, there's really no logical base for a desire. Where goals, <laughs> goals is what a person wants to achieve. So a little earlier I was talking about the word want. I would put the word want more in the category of goals because a wanting is a bit of a craving. <laughs> craving, 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 craving. Um, but it's not as like, <gasps> And I, yeah, and that's actually how desire, desire is like this. Desire is like, <gasps> wow. And goals are like, hmm, yeah. Right? There's just that slight difference, right? One tends to be more feminine based. One tends to be more masculine based because one comes from the head. Goals come from the head. Goals come from, I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to put a map together and I'm going to put a plan together and I'm going to put my steps together to achieve this very thing. And oftentimes with goals, the reason why goals are goals is because we really think we can achieve them. Goals are pretty realistic. They're they're realistic. Oh, I'm going to lose 20 pounds in the next three months. Okay, you know, that's pretty realistic. Or I'm going to, um, you know, have a vacation in December and I'm going to, put my little bit of money aside and I'm gonna do the research on the place I'm going. Those are goals. Very realistic, very attainable. You just put some steps in place and bada boom, you've got it met. So a goal can support, goals can support the creation of your desire, but desires are the bigness of the expansion that calls you forth in ways that tells you where exactly you're meant to focus and look in life. So they're, they're really magical. Let me see what else I want to say about that. Um, goals tend to be specific solutions or benchmarks, rigid, unchangeable, and tangible. Desires are quite untangible. What do we got? I desire to have my spray take off so I can employ others to create and grow it so that it becomes my livelihood. Okay, great. So your desire, Carrie, you have a desire and a goal in there, actually. You have a desire to bring your vision and your product that you have been nursing and creating from inspiration, from a desire to support women in their freshness. <laughs> and then you have a very specific plan in mind uh, to get your business to a certain level. But really, 
The desire is to empower women to get juicy, stay juicy, stay fresh, have fun, play, you know, spray before they play, and then have a wild life of products that take off, and who knows where that's gonna take you, and then the benefit of that, the side effect would be you have a business. That's, that would be more in the desire realm, versus I have this product, I have this vision, I'm going to put it forward into marketplace, I'm gonna build my business to X amount, I'm gonna have a three year goal, a five year goal, and a 10 year goal, and then I will be successful. Just notice the difference, right? <laughs> notice the difference. Um, desires are a little juicier, a little more fun. Again, goals are great, desires are great, desires are what we're speaking about today, and the difference I just explained with the goal and the desire. So, uh, Angelica just has desire or goal, or both, I'm looking for your desires. Host our annual retreat in Chile, that's a desire. And the goal would be to make it happen. <laughs> okay, let's see, anything else from now? Do, 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 do. Desire, let's see one last thing, desire is to want, no, desire is to wish for earnestly. The definition of desire is to wish for earnestly. The definition of a goal is a result that one is attempting to achieve. All right, Jules got, Julie's got. Goal equals green job, desire to be part of the movement to help heal this planet. Beautiful, way to break it down. Awesome, love that. Exactly, right? Exactly. Perfect, perfect, perfect uh, distinction. With goals, you tend to worry about the how because you want to put a plan in place. With desire, the how, and listen up, is none of your freaking business. You can't make up in your own mind the pathway that will create your desires, and if you even try, then you're stuck in a small-minded thinking, and you're gonna be in potential struggle because you're only seeing what I like to say, pie vision, one little tiny slice of the pie, and you don't know all the other realms of possibilities, which is, again, what we're gonna be teaching and playing with in these next four days, that can come out of the seemingly blue in order to enhance your desire. And I'll say this, because this is really, really, really important to know, and I know, I know you've read this somewhere, or have heard this somewhere. And write it down. <laughs> Where the desire exists, so too does the way. Where a desire exists, so too does the way. Now, Abraham Hicks talks about this a lot. Yeah, exactly. Abraham Hicks says, we wouldn't, you know, spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, inner self, higher self, you know, nature, I don't know, whatever words you want to it, it doesn't really matter. But the sense is we wouldn't be given, a desire wouldn't pop forward if the way to that desire didn't already exist. And that's what makes it a little bit tricky because in our logically based, got to see it to believe it, you know, organized world, we say no. They say no, the rest of the world. I say yes, they say no. I believe that you've got to believe it to see it. No, see it to, no, believe it to see it. Yes, you believe it to see it, where the, most of the world is you've got to see it to believe it. But prove it to me, show me. It's like, no, 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 <laughs> no. When you have the desire pop forward, the way to it is already in your field. It's already in your field, it already exists. The problem, <laughs> this goes back to what I said earlier about getting all pissed off and upset and cranky about not having it, is we don't believe that it's in our field because we're getting caught up in how it's supposed to look based on every past conditioning of either having or not having it. And therefore, we can't see it because we become, we become pie-visioned, blind, we literally have blinders on, and we can't see beyond the blinders because we're fixated on how it's supposed to look, getting into our goal-oriented masculine mind, versus, oh, how might it look? Where is it? Is it over here? Is it over there? I don't know. I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna linger and find out, hmm, how good is my desire? Let me just daydream for a little bit about the possibilities of this desire. I mean, it sounds crazy, but hey, what might that be? Maybe this will happen, maybe that'll happen. You know what, it doesn't matter how it's meant to happen because I feel like it's here and it's somewhere. The first step, the baby step, is absolutely in your field. Now, an example of this is, <laughs> This is, this is a really you know, trite example. I'm gonna just use it as a buffer to like come up with a better example. But many of us are like, I want more money. I want more money, I need more money, give me more money, I could use more money. And then we're walking down the street and we pass a dime and we're like, 
oh, or a penny. And we're like, Pfft. and we don't even think about it. We just step right over it. Well, do you think that's not a breadcrumb? That is one penny of one closer to the whatever goal of your money is, and you step over it like, I don't need a fucking penny. I don't need a stinking penny. I'm looking for the hundred thousand dollars, and I'm looking for it to come in this specific way because this is the only way that I know how to get it. Because I've been told that you got to work hard, do hard, go out and market your ass off, get those clients, that, you know, make those phone calls, grab the bull by the horns. <laughs> as Marion Williamson would say, that's a ridiculous concept. Why would we ever grab a bull by the horns? Who came up with that one? That's suicide, <laughs> right? But we step over the penny because we're looking for the big thing down the line, but the penny is the first thing to go, oh, I have a penny. That is money coming my way. Yeah, it's a penny, but it's still money. You ask for money, the world give you, the universe give you money, and you're gonna step over that? So the universe, which is your own inner self, is gonna go, well, to hell with her, she doesn't want the money, okay? We often do that. We think it's supposed to come in a certain package and we get caught up in that package and we get the pie vision going and then we get the struggle going and then we get the upset going and then we're actually repelling our desires because we're in the funk and not the excitement and then we're wondering and then we get really depressed and really downtrodden and then we start to turn in on ourselves and start hating ourselves and doubting ourselves and it's a vicious cycle and you all know what I'm talking about. It sucks. That's why step one, let's just practice our desires. Let's just get juicy for a minute. Let's just allow for a moment to water the seeds of desire without having to figure it out or do something about it. In the very doing, without the other three steps that you're gonna learn, which is the third step is not till the doing. I mean, these are all doing. You're gonna do something. You're gonna linger. You're going to do something. You're gonna lean back. You're gonna do something. You're gonna listen. This is all very active but it's gonna seem not as active because you're so used to, got it, go, got it, go, got it, go. Where'd I go? Where am I? How did I get here? Shit, I don't wanna be here. This isn't what, what I asked for and why does everybody else seem to get their desires and not me? Ah, it's not funny, but it's, it's funny. We've done it. I've, I'm not immune. <laughs> but I have some mastery and that's why I'm here bringing it to you ladies. All right. So, some desires. We've gotten some desires. You've shared a bunch. Feel free to punch in some more now that you've gotten a little clearer about what is a desire versus what is a goal. There might be some desires popping up. Remember, it could be something that you are like, how in the hell? No freaking way. I don't even know. I have a desire. Just put it out there. Like, put it out there. A desire. One of my desires, one of my wacky desires is to actually live in a world that has no money at all and that actually has a whole different set of commerce, which is beyond anything we could ever know, and that one day we're going to actually be visiting the Federal Reserve, like we visit the uh, Coliseum, and we're gonna have, like the future generations will go, what the hell was this? They actually, they did what? With money? And they had this thing, that's this banking cartel? And you know, now I may not see that in my lifetime, but that's still a desire, that seems outrageous. Like really, the money system's gonna go away? Yeah, right kid, that's ridiculous. <laughs> right? So, um, all right, Valeria's leaving. All right, sweetie, nice to see you. <laughs> see you soon. Um, so, you know, it can be outrageous. And the more outrageous, the better, because the more outrageous is the, the, the opportunity we have to expand even further out of the limitations that we have imposed or allowed to be imposed on us in this life, which is the f huge part of this process of stepping into your magical abilities to manifest that you all possess. So if you got some desires that have popped up since, please post them in here and share them and we're gonna have a little home play as well. One of your home plays is going to be come up with three to five outrageously crazy to you desires that you may not even believe. Now that's not something you may necessarily be looking to create these next four days because I know that might be too far out there for some of you, but for the sake of an exercise, I want you to go far out with your desires. like. You know, like for example, Julie, if yours is like, yeah, I'm going to work for the top, you know, whatever the toppest, toppest company that you could even possibly think of that would be the fucking awesomest thing for you to create in the world, put that in the desire manifesto. Just put it in there. doesn't matter if you think you'll never get there. Most often we do think we're never going to get there because we can't even be, believe the fantasy of that desire. 
Because we're in this little pie vision, living our little lives, feeling really shitty about our missed opportunities or whatever the hell, and we can't even get into that. So let's take the time to get into it. You're here, let's play, let's get into the bigness, the outrageousness, the beyondness of your desires, okay? So three to five desires as part of your home play, outrageous, wild, Kool-Aid style, wacky, wacky, wild desires. Remember, this is a walk on the wild side, ladies, so start to get your prowl on. All right, let's get back into the linger piece and then we're gonna open it up to questions. Because I've been talking for an hour. <laughs> I guess these might go an hour and a half. <laughs> Thanks for hanging in there with me. I got lots to say. <laughs> linger in your desire, what does that mean? Linger means to remain or stay on in a place longer than is usual as or expected as if from reluctance to leave. It also means to dwell in contemplation, thought, or enjoyment. To walk slowly, saunter along. Okay, I'm gonna read that again. Linger means, the definition of linger, to remain or stay in a place longer than is usual or expected, as if from reluctance to leave. To dwell in contemplation, thought, or enjoyment, to walk slowly, saunter along. I love that last piece because I was given a download, a desire, I guess, to slow the F down in life on every level. I was, I was a go-getter with the best of them. <laughs> I am a manifesting generator. If any of you know about human design, I know how to generate, I know how to manifest, I know how to go after my dreams like a mofo. And I also am a very fast, I have been a very fast walker in my life and I've prided myself, I get there, I get there, I get there, I don't mess around, I'm like fast walker. But how much do I miss along the way? How much effort have I had to put in because I missed the very breadcrumb, the penny, the sign, the symbol, the moment, the magic that was in front of my face that I couldn't see because I was walking my ass off so on a hurry to get there because I knew what I was doing and I was gonna make it happen that I missed out on the very essence of what is in front of my face and has been shown to me in front of my face more often than not when I slow the F down. <laughs> so get ready to saunter this, this next 24 hours, this whole week. Get ready to slow down, get ready to just hang out. Just hang out in your desire. Don't step over it. Don't, don't judge it. Don't go into how land. I like to call it a how hole. Don't fall down the trap of, oh, how's that gonna happen? Oh, that'll never. Just put that aside, at least for the next four days. You can pick it back up on Monday if you want. If you really wanna go back to your old ways after you've heard this information, you're like, she's full of SHIT, that is totally fine. But for these next four days, open up for the possibility that a little lingering, right? A little hanging out in the field a little longer. Don't go do something about it. Just linger, just be in the possibility. Be in blue sky time. Be in possibility land. Be in like, ooh, I mean, I, I come up with games. I, I play games around like, how do you think this is going to manifest? And so maybe I'll share one of those. I don't wanna share it today because I've already, you know, yabber jab for an hour and, and I want to open it up and have room for, for calls or for questions rather. Um, so linger, the very definition of linger, as I mentioned, would seem to go against all that we've been taught in life about going after our dreams. As I put in the, uh, the invitation to this very event and I shared just a second ago in today's fast paced world, goal oriented, get her done, get her done, get her done. Most of them have been taught that when we want something, we've got to grab the bull by the horns, Plan carefully and work hard. Figure out the how, 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 how are you gonna do that? How are you gonna do that? Give us a plan, write the business plan, write the this, do this. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Can I just, just feel it for a minute? Can I get a little like possibility oriented here before I go into like, uh? When I started my magazine, when I actually stepped toward that desire after I listened long and hard for guidance and I was basically hit on the head by a universal two by four in order to move forward and actually create that magazine. Had I sat down and tried to write a business plan for that business in the beginning, I would have said, to hell with this. That is way too hard. That is so not up my alley. That took, it would have inflated the desire and the juice and the fun and the possibility right out of it. Now again, I'm not dissing these tools. 
tools, these tools are absolutely essential at some point or another, but not for when it comes to the initial seed of desire. And for really what I'm talking about in the quickness of manifestation. Those are old, old world, old school tools that have their place and have their purpose. And you can use them whenever you decide you want to use them. For the sake of this formula that you're going to be learning, they have no place right now. Because had I done that business plan, and I did do the business plan. I did the business plan four or five years into the magazines. I'm like, all right, fine. I'll write a business plan. I need funding. But it pulled me right out of this exact formula. And it put me right into the matrix of mind thinking and doing and driving. And it burnt me that It burnt me out. And you know what? The business ended. Now, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot more to that story. But I was like, ugh, I don't want to do this business. This is not fun. And if it's not fun, it's not worth it. And I'm not saying there aren't going to be times of growth and expansion and struggle and, you know, rising up and, you know, expanding your muscles and going those extra reps in life or whatever it is. Yeah. But if it sucks while you're doing it, don't do it. Either move out and move on to something else or find a way to make it fun and find a way to make it juicy. Okay. Off my soapbox now. Back to the matter at hand. <laughs> um, that approach, as I shared in the beginning, causes misery. We get so upset. I've pretty much belabored that point and I think you all know, but we, that is the root of where we turn against ourselves and get out of the vibrational frequency, frequency match of the very thing that we're desiring because we're not feeling the way we're going to feel when we have that. We're feeling crappy. And then there's a lot of distance between you <laughs> and your desire. So lingering or, or wait, or you finally get what you want and you're pissed off about it because you work so hard and then you get there and you can't even enjoy it. <laughs> Anyone have that one? Like, this is great! And now I can't even enjoy it because I either got sick and missed my own party or I'm just miserable and I can't even find my joy again and now here's the most happy thing I could have created and, and I can't even enjoy it. Okay. All right. So, this is the last teaching piece. And then we're going to open up the questions. So hang in there with me, ladies. Thanks for, thanks for being here. In my four decades of life, I've learned the fastest way to call on the things you most desire is not in the way that I just described. And it's in the way that we're playing in the field with here. And it's about attuning your vibration to align your feelings with the feeling you're going to have when you have the thing, the place, the promotion, the whatever that you most desire. The fullest expression mapped, the, vid, the dream realized, the vision manifested of that which you most desire. So how does that happen? What is the pathway to that? You need to get clear on what it is you desire. So we're going to practice getting clear on what you desire and know that it's not the end all be all. It's just come up with some desires. It's okay if you get a little confused of goals and whatnot. We can help you flush that out. Just start to make a list of that which you desire. And we're going to begin to play with it. So if you come up with your list of three to five desires, the outrageous ones, and okay, you can throw in a few, well, maybe, maybe more realistic ones. <laughs> Just be mindful. This is the opportunity to stretch. I want you to take one of those desires, and maybe you have it in your mind right now, if you do, think about it for a moment. And we're going to put you, actually, you know what, close your eyes. If you have a desire, I want you to close your eyes. And you have it in your mind's eye what that desire is. Maybe it's the vision of you in that desire. That would be preferred. So you're at... You're, you're, you're at the, 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 the island with my tie in your hand, or you're in the arms of your lover, or you're spending the money that came from the success of your business, or you're you know, expressing, you know, speaking on stage to a huge audience on your desired purpose. Okay, so we're gonna zoom straight up now, out of your heads, we're gonna rise up, 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 up to the universe, up, 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 up. And we're going to time warp right on into the future. And now you're floating above the, and you're witnessing you in the fullest expression of that desire. You're in the fullest expression of that desire. You're seeing it. 
you're watching yourself, you're like, holy shit balls. <laughs> Excuse my language. I did it. Oh my God, there I am, living that dream, living that life, living that expression. Oh my God. So you're watching this happen, you're observing from above, and you're like, wow. And I want you to connect in with your future self and that expression. And feel what she's feeling. How does it feel to be fully there in that very thing that you had been desiring for however long you've been desiring it? Two seconds or two years or 20 years. It's here now. You have it. How does it feel? <sighs> Breathe it in. Feel it. Oh my gosh. I feel so free. I feel so alive. I feel so validated. I feel so sexy. I feel so loved. I feel so seen. I feel so important. I feel so healthy. I feel so vibrant. Whatever the feelings are, feel them fully in this moment. Grab hold of them. Let them course through your body. Conjure them up in the physical moment of your body while you're future visiting. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Like, feel it. If you feel it there, feel it here. If you feel it here, feel it there. Like, connect the two. Connect the two. Connect the two. You feel it now. You feel it there. You feel it now. You feel it here. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. And when you've been saturated with the feeling, fully saturated with the feeling, take a good look at that future, thank that future, and you're going to zoom all the way back up, 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 up into the stars, and you're going to come back down, and you're going to drop right back into your body right now. And you're still filled with, filled with that feeling. You're filled with that feeling. I want you to open your eyes and I want to write, you write down what was that feeling or feelings. Write them down. Joy, love, expansion, bliss, fulfillment, excitement, whatever those feelings were, write them down. Write them down. Okay. Now your home play is you're going to come up with at least five, five easy, easy, easy activities that you have maybe already done in your life or could do because you've done them before and you know they bring you these feelings. And what we're going to create a list of what I call pleasure practices. Freedom. Awesome. Freedom's a great one. I think so many of us desire freedom, freedom, right? Freedom, like break free from the constrictions of everything around us and just be able to move about the cabin in whatever way possible without anything pulling us back. So freedom. Now, say your list, a couple other of you, post, post what you got because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to workshop this a little bit. We've got freedom, share, share with me. What are your feelings? Put them, put them in. We got, okay, no, somebody just joined. Put them in, put them in, put them in, whatever you got. You're going to have your list of feelings and you're going to start to feel into what in your life makes you feel free. Well, I feel free when I'm swinging on a swing. Well, that's weird. I haven't swung on a swing in that for how many years? Well, there's the pleasure practice. Peace. Okay, great. Felt peace. So where would you feel peace? What, feel, what in your life gives you peace? Well, taking a, beautiful, taking a nice hot candlelight bath and with nobody around gives me peace. Or meditating gives me peace. Or even just staring at a beautiful picture of nature brings me peace. All right, we've got security, joy, expansion. All right, what makes me feel secure? Wrapping myself in a warm blanket and just hugging myself could be a pleasure practice. I feel so secure. Or I feel so secure in the arms of my lover. So that can be pleasure practice. You can actually request that of your lover or a girlfriend or a parent or a sibling or any, or a pet, right? You just, that love you might feel to bring you that security. Joy, joy. What makes you feel joy? Well, I feel joy when I get on the phone and I have a good laugh with my girlfriends. That could be a pleasure practice. Right, we got fulfillment on purpose, at ease. What makes you feel at ease? A cup of tea, right? Just a quiet moment and just drinking the tea and just not thinking of anything, just staring at the wall. That could be a pleasure practice. Fulfillment might be a crafty or creative activity where you, maybe it's a coloring book. I feel fulfilled when I 
fill in all the blank spots on my coloring book, right? That could be a pleasure practice. So these are just examples of little easy to access, not something you gotta go out and plan and make or do happen. Be very aware of the doing. <laughs> this is not a doing, this is a being exercise. Come up with, for all of the feelings that you receive from your desire, two to three pleasure practices, or five, if you only have a couple of feelings, I want you to come up with at least 10 pleasure practices based on however many feelings you come up with. Easy, accessible in the moment. Wait, I'm out of my energy. I'm feeling really crappy about myself. I'm pissed off about something. Oh, I need to get in the feeling state of my desire. Oh, I'm gonna go get a cup of tea and I'm gonna sit and stare at the wall for 10 minutes and I'm gonna feel ease because my desire makes me feel, I desire to feel ease by having this thing. I'm gonna have ease now. I'm gonna do this practice that brings me ease. I'm gonna, that's my go-to pleasure practice, okay? Hope you're getting the gist of this. So they wanna be very simple. So you wanna come up with 10 various pleasure practices based on the feelings you came up with in your desired vision, knowing that you wanna feel that way when the desire is met. Because what's gonna happen is here you are, here's your desire, and the law of attraction, the more this feeling space matches this feeling space, creates no space. And you're gonna to start to rapidly bring in all sorts of possibilities, breadcrumbs, pennies on the ground that show you your manifestation is coming up it's coming to you and you're going to celebrate every little breadcrumb. The breadcrumbs, pay attention to the breadcrumbs because as you tap into your feeling state, more and more, you better believe you're going to start to see evidence. Some people would call it driftwood, little driftwood, evidence of land, evidence that you're going to be met by the universes and the forces that be, the law of attraction, to have that desire. So you might find you're in the feeling state, you're doing a little meditation or you're doing a little movement or you're dancing around or whatever your pleasure, swinging on a swing or taking a walk or sniffing the flowers or whatever your pleasure practices happen to be. And all of a sudden, you're gonna notice a sign on the street corner that it has the word Cabo and your desire was to get to Cabo and you're gonna go, huh, that's interesting. Okay, or you're gonna desire, you're also you're gonna be, you're gonna just be, you know, opening up a magazine and you're gonna see an advertisement for a business that you didn't even know existed that is actually the kind of business you would absolutely want to be working for and contributing to. And you're gonna go, well, that's weird. Huh, okay. You celebrate the breadcrumbs. You celebrate those breadcrumbs because you that's lingering your desire. And another pleasure practice is if you really want something, like for a while I desired a uh, diesel pusher motor coach. I didn't know how that was gonna happen. I still don't know how that's gonna happen. That, those things are expensive. Well, I started shopping for them anyways. I started hanging out with them. We started looking them up online. We started imagining yourself in them. Things started showing up. So get juicy, play with the lingering. These are the ways that we're gonna to step towards and this is the experience of this particular step one that we're gonna play with for the next 24 hours together in this group. You're gonna be posting, we're gonna put some prompts in for you and you're going to juice it up together. You're gonna to comment and connect with each other. You're gonna upright each other's desires, which means, yeah, yeah, me too. Oh my God, I'll take that too and here's mine. You're gonna share your pleasure practices. You're gonna share your experience of pleasure practices. All week, really, and just not just the next 24 hours. <laughs> All week, you're going to be in this process as I give you the next step and the next step and the next step. All right, that's it for today's teaching. You've got your home play. We've got three more live Facebooks that are going to give you the next three pieces of this formula. If you love, love, love what you received today, Please go out and get your girlfriends and get them back here. They can watch the replay. Let's infuse this group with as many amazing women as possible and let's juice up together. The power of women when we join together with intention is so potent and so powerful. Believe me, ladies, I know you've experienced it in your own way and you know it and that's why you're here, most of you. And if you don't have that powerful sisterhood in your life, take the opportunity to be in the sisterhood and get more of your close friends because you all can play together. 
You can be in this conversation together. You can actually up the ante of what you're creating by educating together and having conversations and games and things like that, because I'll be teaching more of that as we go. So bring more ladies to the table. We want this to be a groundswell of manifestation. Be sure to stay connected. Like once you hop off here, don't just shut your computer and go off and do your day or get lost in your stuff. Like check back in. Be like, hey, how's it going in the girlfriend's group? I need a little boost. I need this. I need that. Oh, I've gotten this. Oh, I got a breadcrumb. Oh, here's my pleasure practice. Oh, I just did my pleasure practice and I feel so good. Now I'm clear on another desire. Whatever it is. Like whatever it is. Come back. Be in here. This is your little bubble of awesome for the next four days. It's your playground. It's your playground of desire, and pleasure, purpose, manifestation fun, connection, and sisterhood. Use this platform to the fullest. And just so you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So there's a lot more to come. There's already a lot to digest in this. So I invite that when we are complete with this call, and I'm gonna stick around for questions, if we're complete, whenever you're complete with this call, whenever you hop off, just take a moment before you move to the next thing. Just put your hands on your heart, maybe your hand on your belly, Take three deep breaths. Actually, we can do this right now. Unless you're going to leave, you can do it again later. Just connect in. Thank yourself for showing up. Breathe. Find gratitude for the information that has been received and the opening that has popped open in whatever distance it's open. Breathe. And really, really, really find love and compassion for anything that you may have done otherwise up until this moment that may have sabotaged or unknowingly pushed away what you most deserve and desire. And just send some love and energy into your heart and your belly and your soul. And breathe again. And then go ahead and transition so you've received it. So, more is coming and I'm available for any questions. So if you have a question, go ahead and just type it in if there's anything you need clarity on. And I'm also, while questions are coming, what I love to do at the end of any uh, offering or teaching that I do is share what I call favorite frames. And a favorite frame is a snapshot, a little moment, a nugget, if you will, where it something struck you the most. So, yay, bye Julie, thanks for being here. So, anything that you wanna just share that was like a aha or a moment or something somebody wrote or something I said or something that popped for go ahead and type that in as well. And I'll be reading those out loud and, uh, um, and then any questions you have. I'm, I'm here for probably the next five, 10 minutes or if there's a ton of questions, I'll stick around longer. Um, for those of you that need to leave, thank you so much. I can't wait to see you tomorrow, same time, same bat channel, uh, 12 Pacific, 3 p.m. Bring yourself back, bring your desires, bring your manifestations, bring your ahas, bring your questions, and bring some more Okay, something happened and I got off, but <laughs> it looks like I'm back. Um, so, any favorite frames, any questions? I'm just gonna lean back and linger in the juiciness of this time together. And I await anything that you would like to share or ask me in the feed. Drink lots of water, actually. You just uh, received some pretty uh, serious transmissions and um, openings, so make sure to drink a lot of water. And I'm gonna share a favorite frame. One of my favorite frames was when uh, Jules Jacobs posted uh, the just very clear distinction between what she understood a goal to be and what she understood a desire to be and it was really spot on so um, if you're watching this later or hopped on later go ahead and just scroll back in and uh, see what what was posted there all right so just question times love going up and then down into my future manifestation yay favorite frame from Keila awesome beautiful 
Yeah, that's a great little practice to just timeline hop as one of my dear friends would call it and future into that and pull the energy out and bring it back and fuse it in and then create real-time connection to your pleasure. All right, home play question. Examples of empowerment pleasure practice. Okay, um, well I gave a lot of them as far as um, uh, the simplicity of them. So one of my pleasure practices is definitely being in so, one of, so freedom also, Crystal, is one of mine. It's one of my core desires. Everything I do, I want more freedom in. So some of my pleasure practices to put me in the feeling state of freedom is to, number one, when I'm feeling dancing. Dancing puts me in freedom. I put on some beautiful music and I just get in my body and, and I begin to move and I move beyond any weird thoughts that I'm moving weird and eventually I get to that place where I'm feeling really free. So that is a go-to simple but yet empowering, easy, easily accessible pleasure practice that helps me get in alignment with freedom. Um, another one of my desires is to, uh, a feeling space of my desire is to feel fully expressed in my sensuality. So, um, one of my practices for feeling sensual is to do a jade egg practice. Um, it's something that I can just go to at any time. I can take time out. I can just use my jade egg. It's probably a whole other conversation for those of you that may not know what a jade egg is. But, um, and just do some pelvic floor work and just get juicy with myself and maybe even do a little masturbation and things like that. So um, let me know if I've answered the question. It's there, the, the key is that they... You, when you're looking at your feelings, you think, what, where have I felt this way in my life before? Where have I felt free? Where have I felt juicy? Where have I felt accomplished? Where have I felt secure? Where have I felt um, ease? And if the answer is something that you can practice easily, put it down as a pleasure practice. If the answer is something that you felt that way but it took you a lot to get to that, then see if you can simplify it down and extract a piece of what that was. Okay. Oh, good. You've got a jade egg. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Cool. All right, Carrie. See you later. Welcome, Hillary. Sorry about your technical difficulties. Okay. Any more questions? And, you know, if it's not right now, you can post them in the Facebook group and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, it's a rose quartz, of course. Okay, cool. Great. Um, actually, Crystal, I do want to let you know that I have learned that rose quartz jade eggs might be slightly dangerous because they're not as hard as a jade egg, as a, you know, as jade actually. And so just be mindful um, if you're going to use the, the rose quartz um, inside. I would, I would uh, maybe avoid doing any super bearing down exercises. Maybe just use it for, you know, pleasuring yourself outside or just maybe a quick inside or just carrying around with you so that you're feeling and working the muscles but not any bearing down because I've heard that they can break. So just so you know, um, other than that, I'd say hold your jade egg in your hand and uh, do some fun, pleasurable activities with that, but maybe not insert it inside, just so you know. But I love that you have a rose quartz jade egg. Of course you would. <laughs> okay, well, I don't see any more questions, so I'm sure I have saturated you good and juicy, ladies. I want you to get up, shake it off, reconnect, breathe in before you move on to your next activity. If you do have any questions, feel free to post them in the Facebook forum here. Um, and we'll put some prompts in and uh, you've got your home play. And I will see you all tomorrow. Like I said, same time, same bat channel. Awesome. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome, Crystal. It's a beautiful thing, just maybe not for inside. All right, ladies. Mwah. I am so in such gratitude that you showed up and um, such, such an honor to be of service to you in this way and to share this powerful, wonderful information that has made such a difference in my life. So share, share what you've come up with and what's happening. I want to know. Get juicy. Everybody take care.